Did you hurt or kill John Benet Ramsey? No. No, I didn't. I got nightmares in my head, I fear Thoughts build up until I can't feel My mind fills up into a creature And it haunts me somewhere much deeper I got nightmares in my head, I fear Thoughts build up until I can't hear That my mind fills up into a creature And it haunts me somewhere much deeper Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. What did the Ramsey housekeeper tell the grand jury about Patsy's handwriting and the ransom note? Have you ever thought about that? That there was someone in the house who often saw Patsy's handwriting and who also saw the ransom note at that time? And at that time is actually really important because one can imitate the ransom note today. And I think what's quite interesting with Gary Oliva is how variable his handwriting is. And when he writes in capital letters, well, they don't compare that. In fact, in the court TV analysis, you actually see, I think where he confesses, he, he writes in capitalized handwriting. And so really, if you want to do uh, do this properly, you need to look at his handwriting in 1996. Have they done that? And even if they have done that, they excluded his DNA. And even if he did confess, so did John Mark Carr. He also confessed. In any event, we want to look in this analysis at what does the ho housekeeper say? What is her opinion? And not only that, she said this to the grand jury and the grand jury, based on her testimony and the testimony of others, actually came to a decision, right? They voted to do something. What do you think they voted to do? Why do you think they voted to do whatever they voted to do? Do you think they were convinced by the housekeeper? It's one thing for the housekeeper to say X, Y, Z. The other thing is, do you think the grand jury were convinced by her testimony. Well, let's have a look at what she does say. Before we get to that, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. Bear in mind, I've written many books on the John Monet Ramsey case. Also, I'll be doing a short little mini-series on the John Monet Ramsey case, specifically just trying to figure out what is going on, because there's suddenly been a huge uptick in, <laughs> in news stories, and by the way, the news story on Gary Oliva, as far as I know, the first time it came out, you know, his confession was somewhere around 2004. And, um, you know, he was, he was cleared in terms of DNA. So are people, do people not read anymore? Are people struggling with amnesia? In any event, if you're interested in my analysis, I will be doing two or three more episodes uh, just dealing with some um, of the well-traveled roads we've we've dealt with in terms of the John Bonnet Ramsey case. Bear in mind, I was actually in Boulder at the house in May this year, not that long ago. If you're enjoying this episode, please like, share, leave a comment. You can also hit the thanks button and let's get started. So I'm now going to read an excerpt out of a book that Linda Hoffman Pugh, the Ramsey housekeeper, she was the housekeeper at the time of this incident. There were also several other housekeepers, and the housekeepers provide fascinating insight behind the scenes into what was really going on in the family, right? And so what we're going to do now is just go through the section dealing with the handwriting. And this is from Someone is Getting Away with Murder. That is the name of the book that she, I think, was going to write. And then this is from chapter one. In the very first chapter, she's talking about the handwriting. In the 14-month period that I worked for the Ramses, I was left several dozen handwritten notes by Patsy Ramsey. Now, just to come out of that, not a dozen handwriting notes, several dozen which I guess could be as many as a hundred. 
I'm quite familiar with her handwriting and I believe I can recognize it with very little difficulty. I told the grand jury that since leaving the employ of the Ramses, I had had occasion to see a copy of the ransom note found at the scene of John Bonnet Ramsey's murder. It was heartbreaking for me to admit that the handwriting in the ransom note looked very much like the handwriting Patsy Ramsey used in writing her notes to me. By way of example, Patsy made her letter A's very distinctively and she would use accents over words like John Bonnet and Attaché and often used initialing of words in combination to name just a few of her many unique uh, handwriting characteristics. And I think that reference to initialing might be a reference to the SBTC. I'm not sure if that's what she's referring to anyway. Then she goes on to say, Because I once felt very close to Patsy Ramsey and regarded her with almost as much affection as a member of my immediate family, it has been hard for me to admit that I am now certain that the handwriting in the ransom note looks to me as if it was made by one and the same person. And so that is her opinion, and she's not a handwriting expert, but just in terms of her familiarity with Patsy and the ransom note, she thought it was written by the same person. That's what, what she testified to the um, grand jury, and obviously there's been this implication that whoever wrote the ransom note is somehow involved in what happened to John Bonet, right? And what I think a lot of people don't know and don't realize is the prosecutors had a team of handwriting experts, including a guy called Chet Yubowski from the Colorado Bureau of Investigation, right? And the team Ramsey also had a team of experts, and you kind of had one team of experts basically having a competition where, where the one expert would say what what he thought wasn't like Patsy Ramsey and the other experts would say the opposite. But the bottom line is, what do you think the grand jury decided at the end of the day? Well, at the end of the day, there were in indictments that were, I think, voted on by the grand jury, but they weren't ultimately signed. They weren't signed off. But what this seems to indicate is that the grand jury thought that Patsy was involved in some way based certainly on the indictments which were kept secret until I think 2013. Now the other thing that's interesting and I'll put a link to this in the description is there was a crime con a year ago where John Ramsey was present and by his side was a journalist who's written a book defending the Ramseys and the point came up that in terms of Patsy's handwriting, that there were other people whose handwriting was a better match compared to Patsy's. And when that was said, Gary O'Leaver's name didn't even come up. In fact, this is what was said. Paula, yesterday you said that 30 people matched the ransom note more than Patsy. I've never heard that statistic, and I find it fascinating. I'd like to know where that came from. And... The information came from a police detective on the scene, and it came out after the Vanity Fair article. And so the argument here is that there are many, many individuals, can't name them, but many, many individuals whose handwriting match or, or are better match than Patsy's, but also we can't name the officer. Would it be so bad to name the officer because surely he's retired by now? And would he really mind, I mean, wouldn't it help, if you wanted to clarify this, wouldn't it help the investigation? I mean, he doesn't work for Boulder PD anymore, uh, you know, 26 years later, or does he? But, but no, 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 let's keep our sources uh, confidential. The other thing that I want to bring up, and I've seen this in ha expert handwriting an analysts, and I've seen it in expert body language analysts, and they th they seem to think that you can boil down an entire case to letters on a piece of paper or a facial tick. And that is going to end up being the smoking gun or a red flag. And the, and the reality is DNA is not the smoking gun. Handwriting is not the smoking gun. Facial expressions aren't smoking guns. And 
in order to properly interpret all of this information, you need to know the context within which it's playing out. And what you tend to find is that all of this is just a fragment that is taken and, and then held up as 100% convincing evidence. And it's relying on the ignorance of people not to know the rest of the story. For example, where was the ransom note written? How long did it take to write? And that's also been something that's be, where they've experimented on it. Um, what about the content of the ransom note? And I've actually made a video. I'll put a link to that in the description as well. Uh, a video showing how much came out of movies. And then there were people who said that the writer of this note seems to be a woman. And then there's also a reference to Southern common sense. And so who is a Southerner in this equation? Why is that relevant? And another very interesting thing about the ransom note is what did the foreign faction, what was this foreign faction? What did SBTC stand for? Well, there was the Subic Bay training camp and there was a painting in the house with those letters on it. Well, did Gary Oliva know that? Well, how would he know that? So surely someone who knew the house would know that. And although that could also include the housekeeper, it could also, of course, include Patsy Ramsey. So it's just astonishing that the same story is being recycled and then you've got really sort of fairly established platforms like Core TV actually giving air to it. And one wonders why. And I, I heard I've been trying to show confirmation of it, but as far as I know, the one handwriting analyst said that John Ramsey had hired her to check the, this particular sample. And so obviously if John has hired her to do that, then isn't there a bias one way or the other? Anyway, what do you think about that? Thank you for listening, and I'll see you guys next time.